My featured car from my personal collection this week, Ferrari, 66 Ferrari 330 GT 2 Plus 2. I think this car is beautiful. What makes it relatively inexpensive is it's a 2 Plus 2. If this car was not a 2 Plus 2, if it did not have a back seat, which by the way you can't fit into, it's just another place to put an ashtray in this car. And a bottle of wine. And a bottle of wine. Uh, if this car is not a 2 plus 2, it's probably 400 k In this case, it's more like a $100,000 car. Sounds expensive, cheap for a Ferrari. I love the deep dish aluminum Barani wheels. It's one of the things that sets this car off. I think this is like a sleeper car. I remember when we were up in Monterey looking at it, and I go, this thing is freaking gorgeous, and, and I love this car. It's like sedan-like almost. Yeah, I love, well, it's obviously, it's a front engine, five-speed V12 uh, Ferrari. Um, it's a four liter engine, it's twin cams, it's three twin choke downdraft Weber carburetors. But what really sets it off again is the super dishy brawny wheels. And this is the mistake that a lot of car companies that go with aluminum and I should say wire wheels, spoked wheels, this is where they fall short. Jags, the old Jags look like shit just because of the rims. No dish. I mean, they look fine, except for then the rim looks like shit. The old Triumphs look like shit. Uh, many of the old British cars, they would go with the beautiful spoked wheels, but no dish, and thus they look like crap. This dish looks great. The knockoffs look great. I love the gills on the thing. It has a beautiful functional gills on the side. Again, it's sort of the businessman's Ferrari. This is what you would have been driving in the mid-60s if you were filthy rich and living in Europe and somewhere. And had style, because I think this is, a, this is just a great style car. I agree, and a lot of people say, well, wait a minute, Ace Man, why, don't, why can't they recreate this car? Why is this car, this car so beautiful, it's stunning. Why don't they recreate this car? And I tell them, well, first thing, the knockoffs, they're illegal. Second thing, you couldn't put the big brakes on this car because it has small rims, lots of tire, and lots of dish. Third, look at the beautiful wooden steering wheel. Where are you gonna put the airbag? Where are the crumple zones? Where's all the Department of Transportation safety shit? Once you add that all that stuff, then you don't have this car anymore. Yeah, and you can't drink while assembling a car either. And I think that's some of the I think that's some of the, the art form that you get in the Ferraris and the handmade cars. It's a it's, Yeah, the guys were loaded. And there's uh, an ashtray in the front and then a foot and a half behind it for the rear smokers. Technically, there could be four smokers in this car at once. And the ashtrays are like jewel boxes. I really think they designed the entire car around the ashtray. It's a, it was a functional piece because back then people used them instead of flicking their butts out on the highway. Well, that's how they signaled. They used their cigarettes. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the uh, engine compartment which uh, I told my assistant Jay to detail, and he did a fucking horrible job. He's a little did, tired from installing I the uh, air vents. <laughs> he didn't even wipe the thing down, the jackass. All right, uh, again, it's a, uh, not a four cam Ferrari, it's a two cam Ferrari. One of the things I love about the Ferraris are the detail. I love the uh, quilted blanket that they diamond. have, the diamond pattern quilted fireproof blanket, I'm assuming that they put uh, under the hood to uh, stop the heat and, uh, and some noise reduction. I always love just the two, two huge oil, oil filters, filters right up front, down. upside down right up front. Now they tell you you're supposed to fill an oil filter up before you put it back on the car, but if it's upside down, I have no idea how that I don't know how works. you change that without it leaking all over the place, but I'm sure the oil drains back into the Well, it's the all out of it by the time, by the time you pull it out. Uh, Anyone who knows me knows I'm not a huge fan of the black automobile, but uh, this car works in black, and then again, the thing that really makes it work is that sort of oxblood maroon interior. This is a great combination. The black exterior and the maroon oxblood interior. And again, these cars, they didn't skimp on the gauges. I'm actually gonna count them out for you. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight gauges, and one is an analog clock. You have tack, you have temperature, you have fuel, you have a speedo. Uh, I guess you have water temperature, oil temperature, and oil pressure. And did I forget yeah, one? Nice big dash of like gauges. You wouldn't expect to see it in a 
in, uh, in an American car. You get like that rectangular dash and four red lights. Right. And one of them's a vacuum cage. <laughs> no idea. Listen, I've been around it's in cars the green. It's good. for 30 years. I still don't know what a vacuum gauge does. I know it, it tells you how much vacuum is going through the intake. It, it, and everybody puts one in their car. Everybody, it's, like the, it's like the magic apple tree. You find one under the seat of every car. I have had more used cars that I've got that has somebody put a vacuum gauge. This one's got a vacuum gauge. And they I must know. have sold what them for? in the 70s or 80s for fuel economy was, or something. Even hot rods had vacuum gauges. Why? You want to know how, why? So you can tell how much had, vacuum your intake and they manifold. All had that, they could go green, yellow, or red. Right. And it was never clear to me, like, where it was. First off, it was fun to see a gauge that just went from zero to the top, to the bottom, to the top again. I think it was, it's like, because you stare at the fuel gauge, it doesn't really move. But you stare at that vacuum gauge me all over the place. I'll have to admit, I did put one in my Chevelle for see? that very reason. You just wanted to see something <laughs> moving around. That and the hour gauge, which did nothing. I'm not sure why it was there. You had an hour gauge? I put an hour gauge from a boat in there because it did something. You could see how many hours you had on your engine? Who knew? Wow, you're like an airplane pilot. All right. So again, uh, four liter, probably about 300 horsepower, a V12. Again, uh, not, not, a, not a small displacement V12 by Ferrari standards. But uh, again, the three carbs, not the six carb setup. And two cams, not the four cams. So not the hot rod Ferrari, but a uh, healthy V12. Solid mated, runner. Mated to a uh, beautiful five speed. And again, it's all about the fit and the finish. And I think that about does it. This is a Ferrari 330 GT 2 plus 2 66. And that's another installment of one of the cars from the Ace Man's collection.